Monaco Pizza presents S S D P P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! All right, so here's the thing. It's the end of the decade, and what we want to do is go through what you think you're all decade Leafs team is. I'm talking four lines, three lines of D, and two goaltenders. So, shall we go through first line, second line, third line? We good with that? Sure. All right, Jesse, give us your first line first. Left wing. Started on the all decades run of Maple Leafs. James Van Riemsdyk. Centered by John Tavares. Right wing, Phil Kessel. Nice. Very good Take that. Compelling. Very good What you got, Steven? Uh, I had slightly different. I have JVR uh, with Matthews and Phil Kessel. Ooh. We spent the whole time begging uh, for Phil Kessel to be put with a number one center. There mm-hmm. you go. And JT isn't? No. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, uh, I'm going to say... <laughs> it's not the one I chose. Okay, so now I think if you're going to put a team together, Tavares is actually the better fit because my pick is... JVR, Matthews, Kessel. Tavares is the better fit between JVR and Kessel because he's a disher, right? He, he can he throws the puck really good. He's got great, you know, yeah, great instincts. But him and JVR are the in front of the net guys. Yes. So they what are. Are, what are you arguing? I'm arguing that Matthews. The reason I put him in that spot mm-hmm. is because Matthews played more games, scored more goals, had more of an effect on the franchise's future at the beginning than J, than John Tavares did That's over the course fair. of the decade, and that is why I took him. Because yes. really, it's like you can't pick a wrong center. Yeah. So, and isn't it funny that we're talking about two franchise centers and having to pick between one or, one or two of them when at the beginning of the decade and the beginning of the show, well, ooh. Yeah, ooh. Joey Crab. Uh, all right, line two, Jesse, go. Line two, Kuhleman, ooh. Matthews Marner. Kuhleman? Kuhleman. Nick, I went through the left wings in the last 10 years, not and great, it's no. not a deep core. But Kuhleman, I think just in terms of longevity, what he meant to the Leafs in that little little bit, Throw him there, and then obviously Marner, probably the he, – he hasn't surpassed Phil Kessel just because he hasn't been here as long, but I'd say the second best right winger we've had in the last 10 years. I am going to go with chemistry, and Ooh. I'm going to make my whole second line behind JVR Matthews Kessel, Hyman, Tavares, Marner. Wow. <laughs> you know what, man? I look back through some of the left wingers the Leafs have had. Mm-hmm. Not great, Bob. Mm-mm. Not great. Not great. And Zach Hyman, uh, homegrown product. Yeah. They got him in a wicked deal. Mm-hmm. He's gritty. Scores goals. He does everything you want him to do, basically. So I'm putting him there, and you can shut your face. I'm not saying he's the second best. I'm just going with chemistry because I'm a really smart guy. I'm not doing that. I'm going with the second best, and the second best is William Nylander. On the left? They listed him as no. a left Come on the on. side. So he's, a right, he's a right winger. Wrong. He's a right winger. How dare they? He's a right winger. You can't cheat. He's a center. He's more of a center than he is a left is winger. Is he a right winger? Oh, he's a left winger now. That's the problem. What What website? Well, reference had him as, at... Uh, at uh, left wing? Left yeah. Because he's left wing right now. So he's yeah. left wing. He, he can switch to you. Yeah, it's all yeah, right. No, yeah, well, yeah, we'll let it slide. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to nitpick it. If it was it. Cabin and on his other wing, I could be like, yeah, the argument could be yeah. or if you put Or if you put Matthews on a wing, like I'd, I'd fight you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Nylander can flip wings and make it work. So I put Nylander, Tavares, Marner. Nylander, Tavares, Marner. And again, you right. might say Mitch Marner's a better player than Phil Kessel. Okay, sure, but sure. show me the receipts. Yeah. Phil Kessel has two cups. Yep. Phil Kessel has a con Smythe. Phil Kessel has a bunch of things, and Marner may get all check, those things. Check, check, Not yet. Mm. And he did not do as much for the Leafs in this decade mm-hmm. as Kessel did. Period. 100%. Yet. 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 Yes. Next decade. Next decade. 2020s. He'll be up there. All right, line three. I debated with myself a long time about whether I should have Hyman on that second line or that third line, but it's Hyman, Kadri, Nylander. Mm. Zach Hyman, if you look at Zach Hyman's low run so far with the Leafs, it's so impressive. It is. Right. Like, you don't realize how long he's actually been here and how and how well he's played. So, yeah, definitely deserves to be in the all-decade team. And then Kadri, I think, is my easy pick. is between kind of him and Bozak, but, like, whatever. Kadri gets that third line. Nylander, obviously, going to be the greatest leap of all time. Continue. Uh, I am going to go with, I had the line for a second. Uh, Nazem Kadri is my third line center. Mm-hmm. On his right is William Nylander. On his left, Clark MacArthur. Mm, That's good a good pick. one. Yeah. Is who I have. A extraordinarily underrated leaf for the whole time he was a leaf, and they let him walk for nothing for no good effing reason. Like Grabowski. Like Grabowski. Now, I could not find room for Grabowski on my team, but I tried. 
He's a centerman, or he was mm-hmm. with the Leafs, yeah. yes. but he's a center left wing. So you could have yeah. made the argument. I had to go with somebody else on my fourth line for that. But we're on the third line, so I'm going Hyman, Kadri, Kapanen. Kapanen, really? If you look really? at what Kapanen has done, and he has played games every season since 15-16, so that's almost okay. half a decade. If wow. you look at what he's offered and brought in the time that he's been given, mm-hmm. you know, he scored a big playoff goal from Brian Boyle in overtime. Oh, yeah. Remember that when he's a fourth line? Who had the second assist on that? Oh, I have no idea. Matt Martin. Cool. Matt Martin. I Who probably would remember the probably that? started in the corner with Matt Martin. Probably Thomas Caverley from the grave because he was the king of the secondary assist. Apparently. Uh, Hyman, Kadri, Kapanen. Kadri was easy for me. It was Kadri or Bozak, but Kadri's the easier guy to me because mm-hmm. I think he's a better player. Um, and I think yep. uh, made, uh, you know, he's a homegrown guy too. From here, drafted here, yep. I would have gone him. I think Kapanen is, has got such a special skill set and he's contributed for a long time. I'm going with him. Fourth line. Fourth line. My left wing, Joffrey Lupo, centered by Tyler Bozak. Right wing, Leo Komarov. Oh, great. Uncle wow. Leo deserves respect. He does. He Put does. that respect on Uncle Leo's name. Yeah, the Leafs uh, all-star representative one year. Yes. And Joffrey Lupo, if you walk into any real sports from 2016 to 2018, you'll find his jersey for $10. Yeah. Oh, so they're still, still there. They're still oh, yeah. there. 2020. They're still they'll, trying they'll to be sell there until 2025. So respect Joffrey Lupo as well. Uh, Adam, I want you to go. <laughs> okay. I have my fourth line, but I want you to go. I have Lupo, Bozak, and Connor Brown. Oh, okay. Very good. Now, the reason I took. Lupul's easy, you know. Mm-hmm. If it were not for injuries, Joffrey Lupul was pretty impressive. He oh he scored in he uh, what was it sixty six points in sixty two games. Yeah, and then in, they signed him with that contract for the, like, great. Yeah, what one of my <laughs> lasting memories of twenty thirteen when they finally made the playoffs is that game against Ottawa. I think he scored the. It was like the fourth goal of that game when everyone knew it was iced and all the Leaf fans in that building are going nuts. And I think it was Bob Cole calling that game goes, and the Leafs are going to the playoffs. Oh. Oh, it was so good as, as Lupul loses his mind. Yeah, and Lupul, that lupul Cadre fratten line, I want to say, whatever that third that line was right. in the playoffs, <laughs> that was a great line. Yeah. And let's not forget about there was Lynn Sanity going on in New York at that time. But I remember Frat Sanity oh, when he had like 13 <laughs> points in 10 games. He was, that was hot not as a pistol, a and then he hit the damn post in yeah. Game Seven. Yep, Frat Sanity. Oh, um, Steve. And I, oh, sorry. And the reason nope. I took Connor Brown is that we would never be the same if Connor Brown doesn't score that goal no. uh, against Columbus, or sorry, against Pittsburgh yep. to uh, to to have the Leafs clinch the playoffs. I didn't think he played long here long enough. That was my only. Debate. He was here since 15, yeah. 16. But then he it was two years, right? Yeah, it's two full years. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, that, fair. Yeah, I'm changing my but answer mid yeah. midstream here because <laughs> I want my fourth line. I wanted my fourth line to be a line that defined the Leafs because th- this is. I already did my all decade team for sports, and it was slightly different. You had to go with guys who defined it. So I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna change my answer. I was gonna put. I'm not kidding. Jay McClement. Oh. As, as my fourth line center, I am instead going to go with Tyler Bozak. Because if we're going to go with guys who define the team, you cannot have yeah. this conversation yeah. without Tyler Bozak. So, changing up a real life line ever so slightly, my center is going to be Tyler Bozak between Fraser McLaren and Colton Orr. Yeah. Good for you. To find an era, that's for yeah. sure. They absolutely did. And I still remember clear as day. That game against Montreal, it's like five to nothing or something, mm-hmm. and they just send out Colton Orr and Fraser McLaren to literally beat up the whole team. Oh my god! Tyler Bozak centering Fraser McLaren and Colton Orr. You want the defense bearings? Let's go. Fanuf Riley, Caberlet Gar- Gardner, Hainsey Polak. Wow, very interesting. Compelling. If you don't have enough in your top pairing, you're disrespecting the Leafs. Screw you. The captain <laughs> came here, didn't play that well, but he was the captain, who was leader of this team during the worst times of this last decade. Yeah, he put Riley, up a lot of shit. Best defenseman last decade, easily. Caberlet, beginning in this era, but he was he was he was he there in one year. He's, I still he still him. had 38 points in that one year. I know. I, I'm in, counting. I'm throwing in there. Jake Gardner. No one took more shit than Jake Gardner. Yeah. No God bless him. Deserved. Hainsey and Polak is my Hainsey and Polak line. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. We didn't want. We didn't want them. We never want to see the ice. But they played a combined half the decade for this yeah, team yeah. and so many minutes. 
So many God. minutes for Ron Hainsey. So yeah, those there was two guys a lot of minutes of frustration watching those two. Yeah. There's no question. So they deserve to be on a line together if you're defining this last yeah. ten years. I got Riley Hainsey as my top, top pair. Top pair. Who played the right side more than Ron Hainsey over the past no decade? And who's let who's let Morgan Riley be Morgan Riley? More and who's than let Ron Morgan Hainsey? Riley be Morgan Riley? Which is why my second pair is Jake Gardner, Roman Polak. Ah. There you go. And for those of you who are cringing real hard. I want to remind you, those two pairings were on the Leafs at the same time <laughs> for <was> two <laughs> years. It was tough. And yeah. then, and then the third. It was third sad pair. as they deserve it. Yeah. Uh, my third pair. Again, we're gonna go with guys who defined the decade. One of my favorite pairs the Leafs have ever busted out in their galaxy brain bullshit of thinking this might be a good idea. Fanuff on the left, Mike Koska on the right. Oh, Mike wow. Koska, Mike. Thor, Koska, Mike, amazing Marley, and they've actually been playing hockey while the lockout's been going on, so why don't we have him on the first pair with Dion Phaneuf on opening night, Koska? Yeah, because Keith Hawley couldn't earn it. You're right. He, man, he's our seventh defenseman. It's been that kind of decade, uh, so I'm going Phaneuf, Koska. Okay, Adam. well, I also had Riley Hainsey as my top pair. Mm, I oh, had wow. Gardner Coverle as my second pair, mm-hmm. and my third pair is Phaneuf Franzen. Cody Franzen. Cody, Cody Franzen's a good one. A good one. That's a, a very good one. I looked it up this week. Better than Mike Oscar. <laughs> 115 <laughs> points as a Leaf. Oh, wow. I believe- they were going to sign him to a five-year, $25 million deal, and he turned it down. Two goals in Game 7. Kill me. I know. Did he score two goals in Game 7? He scored the first two. Wow. I don't yeah. remember that. Goalies. This and one, in this typical one's... Cody Franzen fashion, it was his fault the Boston scored the one in yeah. the two-one game. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna. I think we're all gonna agree on this one. Yeah. Anderson Reimer. It's oh, easy. we're doing two goalies. Yeah, yeah. Good I got a backup. I got, oh. also got Gabrowski in the uh, in the press box. Yeah, me okay. too. Yeah, yeah. So you got? I got Anderson Reimer. Okay. Tell me I'm wrong. Anderson Reimer. Reimer Anderson. No! <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I want to lose first and then come back later. Oh, hey. <laughs> we got to learn the hard way. You know, That's by losing Anderson, with Reimer. <laughs> with the exception of Anderson's first month, we the whole time have just been like, yeah, no, he's good. He's, he's the best. Yeah. He's the best. What do he's you mean? The best. But Reimer dragged that He was the only reason they made the playoffs yep. in 2013. The only one. Yeah. You can say that about Anderson. And I just feel like Anderson has not been talked about nearly as much as Reimer was. There wasn't as much debate. <laughs> there wasn't... You shut your face, there wasn't the debate going on. Oh, yeah? And Reimer is letting you all know in the most, <laughs> most polite way he possibly can that he is still the real deal! If we were just going goalies who generated conversations <laughs> shut over the last decade, it'd be Reimer McElhaney. It'd be Reimer McElhaney! And then you'd be the Jesse Blake. What? My argument's not who's the best. It's just who we talked about. And it's who's the best. <laughs> Has Anderson ever received a heart vote? <laughs> Reimer did. He received one. From exactly you? One in 2013. From Jesse Spector, who was brave. <laughs> Woo! Reimer Anderson. Hey, man. I was looking through some pretty scary D, uh, oh, uh, yeah. goalies throughout the thing. I also remember... Jonas Gustafson. Remember Alexi Marchenko? That was a guy. Oh, my God. Anyway, throwing that out there. So that is our All-Decade Teams. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll have more clips coming up. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.